Let's talk about type 4 hypersensitivity reactions in terms of autoimmune responses. So in type 4 reactions, it is primarily T cells that are initiating and having the effector function that is damaging organs and tissues. So we talk about these autoreactive T cells. They could be CD4 or CD8 autoreactive T cells recognizing cell peptides. Now, of course, you're going to need T cells um, in a type 2 and a type 3 reaction to generate antibodies. But when we talk about type 4 reactions, we're typically referring to T cells and their ability to induce, induce inflammation on their own and their ability to kill cells on their own. So in type 4 reactions, we're having um, T cell receptors recognizing self peptides presented on MHC1 or two molecules on uh, host cells. So there are two examples that we'll cover in this video of type 4 uh, hypersensitivity reactions that are autoimmune disorders. And the first one is multiple sclerosis. And if you recall from freshman biology, uh, here's a neuron. And for neurons to be able to efficiently uh, transmit their action potential down the length of the axon, um, neurons, uh, axons are coated with uh, a layer of fatty protein substance called a myelin sheath, and the substance is created by a type of cell called an oligodendrocyte. So oligodendrocytes are wrapped around the axons creating these myelin sheaths, and that allows for the efficient transmission of action potentials down an axon. So in individuals who suffer from MS, um, there are self-reactive T cells, autoreactive T cells, which seem to recognize the protein myelin. So myelin is a self-protein. -pro uh, we shouldn't recognize it, but in some individuals, they have an immune response to the myelin protein. And it's not clear who's presenting myelin to CD4 T cells, but somebody is, and those T cells are becoming activated. Um, now, CD4 helper T cells can differentiate into a number of different types of T cells. It appears that in MS, it is the Th1 effector T cell that is responsible for the immune reaction that destroys these myelin sheaths. And it seems that it is due to stimulation of macrophages. So we learned about macrophage activation, uh, Th1 cells um, recognizing peptides shown uh, on macrophages, uh, MH2 molecules, and Th1 cells secreting interferon gamma, helping uh, activate macrophages. And it seems that this immune response causes inflammation in the area of these uh, myelin sheaths and eventually leads to the destruction of the myelin sheaths. So the action of the macrophages and other inflammatory molecules, cytokines uh, and the such here, leads to what's called a demyelination. And so the myelin uh, coating is slowly uh, broken down over time, these cells are destroyed, and the action potential does not transmit properly down the length of an axon. And this leads to uh, many different um, issues with neurological signaling all throughout the body. Um, the risk factors for MS uh, are numerous. So there are some genetic risk factors carrying certain alleles of HLA uh, DQ genes, uh, DQA and DQB, that combine to form what's known as the DQ6 um, allotype. That allotype seems to present peptides such as myelin more uh, at a higher rate, therefore increasing the risk of an immune uh, reaction against the myelin protein. Um, we know that interferon gamma plays a role in the effector mechanism that involves killing the myelin sheaths, or killing the oligodendrocytes that produce the myelin sheaths. And this is known, as mentioned in your textbook, that um, when individuals who have MS are given interferon gamma as a drug, that actually speeds up the disease. So uh, presumably this uh, cytokine is contributing to the activation of macrophages, and the macrophages are leading the, to the destruction of um, the oligodendrocytes. Um, what are the causes of MS? Um, so we have got risk factors uh, that, are, that are genetic. Uh, there could be some molecular mimicry here going on. There are some infections that might trigger an immune response that overlaps with myelin and oligodendrocytes. 
So there's some evidence for that, not clear. Um, uh, another risk factor we spoke about in the previous video was uh, environmental factors that are non-infectious, such as physical trauma. And there's some evidence that individuals who suffer from brain injuries or concussions have higher risks, uh, higher rates of MS. So um, concussions could be a risk factor in MS. Tissue damage, uh, inflammation, triggering an immune response, and the immune system thinks it's fighting a pathogen or clearing out damaged or dead or dying cells, and in fact it attacks healthy uh, oligodendrocytes. So that was MS. Uh, let's talk about type 1 diabetes, another type 4 hypersensitivity. So type 1 diabetes involves the death of cells in the pancreas, specifically cells found in these islets of Langerhans. In these islets, these little grouping of cells in the pancreas, you find alpha cells, beta cells, and delta cells. That's delta, right? No, it's gamma. Sorry, that's gamma. <laughs> Um, the beta cells secrete insulin in response to high glucose levels in the blood. So in individuals who suffer from type 1 diabetes, typically during childhood, there is a slow uh, erosion of the beta cells in the pancreas. So it is believed that CD8 T cells um, are recognizing some pe uh, peptide presented on the surface of beta cells and believing that these cells are infected, destroy these cells. So the um, number of beta cells slowly decreases over time, such to a point that an indiv individual doesn't make enough insulin and uh, has constant high blood sugar levels, which will damage organs and tissues throughout the body. So CD8 cells are thought to play a role in type 1 diabetes, but also CD4 cells are thought to play a role. And they might also be recognizing peptides that trigger inflammation that specifically trigger the death of beta cells. The alpha cells and the gamma cells uh, do not seem to be affected in type 1 diabetes. Uh, we know that CD4 cells must play a role because we know individuals who carry certain HLA alleles in the DQ genes, which code for MHE class 2, uh, certain alleles have, give individuals an increased risk for um, having diabetes, specifically type 1 diabetes. So we know if MHE2 is playing a role, then that means CD4 is playing a role. So again, type 4 diabetes primarily, I mean, sorry, type 1 diabetes, a type 4 hypersensitivity disorder.